But of course, as we bring you into the boot room, we are looking ahead to 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Big match between Chelsea and Arsenal. Our focus right now on Arsenal because so much pressure on this club based on how they finished last year and then how they start this season losing to Brentford 2-0. Mm -hmm. All right. I know that you don't believe the sky is falling quite yet, Robbie Musto, so mm -hmm. I'm going to start with Tim Howard. How bad do you think this situation is? Well, I think it could get worse quickly. Um, you know, they, typical Arsenal at Brentford played really good football, enjoyable to watch if you're a neutral, uh, but they don't have that instinct in the end to finish you off. And then Chelsea today, Man City next week. Th this can get – I mean, now, listen, they did the double over Chelsea last year, so it wouldn't surprise us if they, if they got something out of today. But it doesn't feel – like there's enough in this Arsenal team at the moment. We continually talk about the same things. And so when we talk about lack of leadership, lack of discipline with the red cards, you know, who's going to step up? They can't figure out the captain situation. Um, I just wonder inside that camp if everything is okay. We're going to have more on this match in just a second. I do want to show you, we showed you Ole Gunnar Solskjaer walking in St. Mary's. That's Harry Kane walking in at Molyneux. He has made the trip. It's Wolves Tottenham. We'll see if he is in the squad. Mm. And when we have team news, we will bring it to you. But definitely worth pointing out that he has at least made the trip. Actually, just quickly, mm. a reaction to Harry Kane? Expected. He, it was expected to Does to it affect the, the players on the team? Uh, I, I don't think in... I think they're used. I think they're familiar with the idea that he's not going to be there. We saw it last weekend at a brilliant performance. If he comes and he adds to the squad, absolutely right. I'd be shocked if he starts. Yeah. Maybe on the bench. The team played so well last weekend, but I think it's good. He should be there. He's fit and ready to go. He should be in the squad. I, I think that I think Tottenham are playing this very well. If I were them, and that type of money was on the line in a transfer, I, he wouldn't be anywhere near the field. So I think the bench is probably a good place for him to, to stay until the transfer goes through. I don't think he'll be at Tottenham uh, by come the end of the month. But, uh, yeah, obviously they have to it's, – it's delicate. He's such a legend at that club. They have to mm. try – both sides have to figure out a way to do this classy. But you'd have him bubble wrapped on Absolutely. a comfy couch somewhere <laughs> away from any potential yes. injury. Yes. All right, we'll have an answer to whether or not he's in the squad in about 20 minutes' time. We'll pass it on to you. But let's bring it back to Arsenal. Mm. All right, Tim pointed out a lot of fundamental problems. Certainly mm. leadership is one of them, and it's a big one. Manager maybe above and perhaps on the field as well. Based on the first match and what we saw at the end of last season, your feelings about Arsenal right at this moment? Well, I think it's... There's been a lot of bashing of Arsenal, and I get it. Last week was was not acceptable, but there's reasons for that. Mm. There's a there's a there's a COVID issue with the football club. They're two of their most experienced and best players weren't able to play. You had young kids playing in that game, a game that it's like a, a, a World Cup final for Brentford. Listen, it wasn't acceptable, but you know you got to you got to step back and take a look at this. From Boxing Day of last season to the end of the season, their form was good, kind of figuring out a way. If it would have been third, that, that kind of situation. And they did win the last five games. So they finished the season pretty well. I get what they're trying to do. This is a different Arsenal now. The reality is they're not competing for Lukaku's and for Grealish's. You know, for whatever reason, with ownership, et cetera, et cetera. They're not that club anymore. And I think as long as Arsenal fans, and it's easy for me to say, of course, get their head around, they're going to try and build a new team, a new future with young players, They've spent a lot of money, but all the players, five players, all 23 years of age and under, they're trying to build for the future. And I get that. I've got concerns that maybe we'll get on to with yeah. the manager. But just for now, I see what they're trying to do, and they will get better when everybody's fit and the experienced players come back and some of these young guys will fit into the team and hopefully develop and improve. You know, it's not the end of the world, in my opinion, for Arsenal right I, now. I want to get to the manager, uh, but first, you mentioned the spending and perhaps not competing for the Lukaku's of the world or the Harry Kane's, but they're still right. spending. Mm. And when you see this total here and this list right here, first up, does the number surprise you and where it stacks up? It surprises me in the sense that I, I, I wonder who they, you know, who are they buying for, for, for this money? I mean, Odegaard and Ramsdale and Ben White, I like those players. I don't think it moves the needle for Arsenal Football Club, Robbie. I think they finished eighth last season. Yeah, I know they're missing some players due to COVID issues, but they had those players last year. And I'm just not sure that Arsenal do anything more than try and compete for one of those those top six European spots. So what, you, what, what, what do you want them to do with the money? Well, well, to get, you, the players sure. that you're, you're wanting, mm -hmm. two, 
Like, you well, might get two players with that kind of money. Well, well at our, at, for me, in my time, Arsenal Football Club is a giant football club. It's brilliant. It yeah, has agreed. so much success. So when we start talking about buying players uh, under under 23 and building for – the Premier League doesn't allow you to time. It doesn't allow you to, okay, here's three years, and in three years we'll be – that doesn't happen in the Premier League. It, it, it turns over so quickly. And I tell you what, losing to Brentford was a big deal. These next two games, if they don't win them, if they don't beat City and they don't beat Chelsea today, there's going to be so much pressure around a football club. And I don't think anyone's going to be talking about everybody stay calm, we're building for three years down the line. I don't think the mm. Premier League allows for that. And a lot of that pressure is obviously going to be on Mikel Arteta. And there were times last season you could feel and sense the pressure that he was under. Do you think Mikel Arteta is the right man for this job? I'll get back to that. You think you could feel it last year with the fans in the stadium? Now, he, <laughs> yeah. now, he, now you're going to feel it. And that's that's the thing with Arsenal. And that's when the pressure will totally go on him. I'm not ready to get to give up no. on Mikel Arteta. I don't, I don't believe that's the right thing to do right now. I agree with Tim. The pressure's going to be intense. They've got difficult games. The, this has been a very difficult job. We said that from day one when he took over. He had issues to deal with, with Meza Ozil and, and transitioning and getting rid of some of the players that weren't doing, doing the business. There's still work to do on that. But I just think if you're going to... You're going to fire him three or four day games into this season with what the job's been like and what he can protect. You know, what if somebody else comes in? What are they going to do then? Like, it's the same group. And, the only and knowing thing, that two of your first three games are Chelsea and Man City right. as well. And I just want to just I don't want to make sure we like my legitimate concern with him is this. And all that being said about Mikel Arteta, I worry about his man management. Mm -hmm. It's his first manager's job. Coaching wise, we know he's smart. I worry about his relationship with the players, how he deals with them. Is he arrogant? Is there a good atmosphere? Does he put his arm around shoulders? That is what's hardest for us in here in the yeah. studio to try and gauge because we're not the training on every day. And you need leadership on the field as well. You do. And, and to Robbie's point, is he the man for the job? Yes. Get rid of him? No. But <laughs> you rightfully mentioned when that place is full and the Emirates and they're, and they're not winning games, there is going, whether we like it or not, there's going to be massive pressure on him. And, yes, he has to get that right. The divide between the senior player leadership and the manager has got to be rock solid. Right now, it's not. All right, there's always a level of pressure. Got cranked up after week one. We'll see what happens today, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. It's Chelsea Arsenal. That was Boot Room. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.